Don't worry, Hoss. I'll get him there. Howdy, Hoss. Howdy, Sam. What can I get you? Oh, give me a tall cool one, Sam. Get him a little time until Joe and Paul get to town. I know. When I move. It is time for another dance. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> hey, Oz, look at that old man over there. He's been in here drinking and dancing with Molly all afternoon. <laughs> Most any man half his age would be under the table by now. Witch. What do you mean, you're a boyfriend? Now, you listen to me, Sal. I'm going to give you one minute to get out of here, and then I'm going to pull that dyed hair right out by the roots. Oh, no, I heard how you lured him over here, you oh, fake. But I had to come and see it for Gosh, myself. No, oh, no, 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 so be. now you've yeah. seen. Now, get out. This is my territory. No, 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 you do not send her away. No, of course, she is charming also. Charming? Well, I'm not... You should see this one when she gets out of bed in the morning. Oh, She's really? enough to make a, a strong man die. Oh, no, no, ladies, please. You no, ladies. stay out of this, honey. I have to teach this cruel bait to stay away from my no man. bait! Take that back, you decrepit old bag! Bag! Don't you think we ought to break them up? Yeah, before they start breaking up the fixtures. No, oh, please, gentlemen, no, no, no. Let the ladies have their little fun. I would be willing to pay whatever small damage they cause. You will! You will! Certainly not. That would be the height of disrespect. Since it is me they are fighting over. Quite a list, mister. You sure you can pay? No, don't worry, my friend. Do not worry at all. But I am worrying. What is your name, anyway? Lafitte. Jean Lafitte. Hey, there was a famous pirate named Jean Lafitte. You ain't by chance related, are you? Related? My dear friend, I am that Jean Lafitte. <laughs>
You know, we ran into old Jim Lane, you know, the way he likes the job. Oh, listen, can I talk to you a minute? Well, Hoss, we're late for Lawyer Betcher's meeting. I can't wait. Yeah, just take a minute, Paul. Well, Joel, you tell the lawyer that we'll be... How long? A few minutes? Right. Now, what is it? Come on, me. Paul. Yeah. Do you remember one time telling us about having met Jean Lafitte when your ships were at the same harbor? Yeah, when I was an apprentice seaman. Yeah, down in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. How old would he be now? Well, according to reports, he died a long time ago. Yeah, but that's according to reports. Now, if he is still alive, how old would he be? Oh, well, I know. I guess maybe about 70. 70, huh? Well, what's all this about? Paul. He's over there in Roy Coffey's jail right now. He says he's Lafitte. What's he doing in that jail? Oh, there's a ruckus over at the saloon, and a yeah. couple of women got in a fight over it. A couple of women got in a fight over it. 70-year-old man. Paul, wait till you see this 70-year-old man. Howdy, Ben. Roy. <laughs> you come over to identify our prize prisoner like Hoss here said you could? Well, Roy, I come over to have a look at a 70-year-old man. Oh, I don't know if I can identify him. I, I was a kid when I saw Lafitte in New Orleans. Besides, I heard he died a long time ago. Now, do you really think that could be him? Well, it could be. After all, he's in my jail. <laughs> ben, what I've heard of this John Lafitte, he was a pirate and a smuggler and a swindler and just about every kind of a rascal known, but this fella sure answers that description. <laughs> he was also a war hero, Roy. Ever since Paul first told me about him when I was just a young man, I got interested in him and I did some research and I found out if it hadn't been for Jean Lafitte that we'd have lost the war 1812 at the Battle of New Orleans. Of course, that's right, Hoss. But he was a uh, pretty bloodthirsty pirate and then he became a war hero. Then he went back to pirating again. Well, let's have a look at this ghost anyway. Well, come on, but I don't think he's no ghost. I think he's just a plain crook, like Sam the bartender's going to testify at the trial. Well, old man, we got somebody here who knew you in the old days. Most interesting. Is this the man? Yeah, that's Ben Cartwright. He wants to know the real John Lafitte. No, you are not old enough to have known me in my prime. Oh, well, I was just a pretty young apprentice seaman at the time. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid my memory is not that good. Uh, young girls, I remember. Young apprentice seamen, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I understand you're in jail here because a uh, little woman trouble. It was worth it. Those girls were absolutely delightful. And after all, what is there left for a poor, helpless old man but to try to enjoy his few remaining years? Helpless old man. Why, you old reprobate, you're just about as helpless as a two-headed sidewinder. <laughs> Roy, I don't think that's quite respectful to talk to an American hero like that. Him, a war hero? Hoss, all these confidence men try to get you to feel sorry for him. Now, don't let this one fool you. Well, I'll tell you how much he's fooled me. I'm gonna bail him out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay all the damages. You what? I'm gonna bail him out. Now, look, Hoss, you don't have to get yourself involved in this. this is... Now, Paul, you were the one that told me about the War of 1812 and about Jean Lafitte. Now, if this man happened to be Jean Lafitte, it'd be a crying shame for him to have to spend the last remaining days of his life behind bars. Hoss, you're letting this imposter play in your sympathies. But, Roy, I ain't for sure he is an imposter, and that's just the trouble. I'm gonna pay his damages. Well, all right. I got an itemized list here somewhere. Now, look, Hoss, we're already overdue the lawyer, so let's go over there and you can come back and settle this later. Oh, you go ahead. I'll join you later. All right. See you later, Hoss. All right, Ben. There you are. Well, here's your stuff, your cane. Oh, and... uh, my walking Your bag. Hey, you Fine. know something? Oh. Yes. That's the darnest knife I've ever seen in my life. That, my friend, is a pirate's cutlass, as necessary to my profession as, uh, plow to a farmer. Well, what do you use it for? Slitting throats. <laughs> you know, I never know for sure whether you're joshing or whether you're on a level. You know I am never certain myself. <laughs> <laughs> A 
guy's Chad. Well, good. What did Hoss want, huh? Huh? Oh, I'll tell you about that later. Where's Amos? He won't be here. Well, how are we going to settle anything without him? Well, the, the truth of it is, he was here, but uh, he was so drunk, I had his foreman take him home. Now, look, Walter. I think we've waited just about long enough to get paid for that herd. Amos Whitaker swears that you were paid in full and in cash when you rode out to his place a week ago Tuesday. Well, then he is drunk. Has he got a receipt to prove that? Says he and your father are such old friends that they never bothered with the receipts and such. Well, that's true enough, but what's he trying to say? That I'm cheating him by asking him to pay twice for the same herd? It's a lot of money, Ben. Now, come on, Walter. You don't think I'm trying to pull some trick on him, do you? Well, of course not, Ben. I trust you implicitly. Well? The thing is, I trust Amos Whitaker implicitly, too. Oh, he's, he's a difficult man when he's drinking, but... Well, I've never heard of him doing anything even slightly dishonest. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Amos better be sober in the morning, because I'm riding out there to have a talk with him. Go, oh, Ben. Let me deal with it. Now, I've handled both your affairs for a long time. I promise I'll get to the bottom of it if I have to put aside everything else on my calendar. All right. Thank you, Walter. Well, I'm not being entirely unselfish, Ben. People are going to stop talking and start shooting. How's a lawyer going to make a living? So <laughs> long, Mr. Betts. Bye, little girl. Ready to go, Hoss? Oh, hi, Bo. What do you got there? It's a... Uh, it's a diamond. Ain't it pretty? Mr. Lafitte gave it to me. He said he, uh, he got that off of a Greek princess. Yeah, Pa was telling me about that new friend of yours, Hoss. He, uh, talked you into buying that thing? He gave it to me. It's a pretty big diamond. What did you give him in return? Just a couple of drinks over there at the Gold Lily. I bet I know. Then you talked him into taking every bit of money you had on you. Yeah. I'd have done that anyhow, even without this. You know, Joe, they say if you... if you take a, a rock, you put a diamond on top of it, you just tap it. Now, if it's a real diamond, it won't break. Of course, uh, if it isn't a real diamond, it shatters in little pieces. Rock like that? Yeah. I ain't, I ain't for sure I even want to find out. Well, it's a few hours, of course. That man was a famous Jean Lafitte. Oh, such a long walk. Mr. Lafitte, hi. Huh? You hoof it all the way out here? Well worth it to see my good friend, Monsieur Haas, again. Oh. What can I do for you, Mr. Lafitte? Oh, yes, I have another gift for you. A most magnificent... ruby. A ruby, huh? Yes, now hold it up to the light. Oh, you see how it glitters in the sun? Do you know how I got that ruby? I myself. I tore it from the finger of a Spanish grandee after boarding his boat in the Straits of Lascar. Yeah? Well, it's... Uh... Beautiful. It's mighty, mighty pretty. Mr. Accept Lafitte. it from me, please. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Now, now, what can I do for you? Yes. Uh, Monsieur Oss, I will go hungry and homeless. Unless you see fit to extend the hospitality of the Pont de Rosa for a few days. Mr. Lafitte, what'd you do with that money I gave you yesterday? 
We're all foolishly squandered on beautiful women. If there is one thing life it enjoys is foolish squandering on beautiful women. I mean, dad, man, if you ain't got more gall than any man I ever met, Mr. Lafitte. Yes, I find it very useful. Well, I'll have to talk to my pa and brother. Mr. Lafitte, are you all right? Sit down, sit down here. You will please explain to them that a futsal old war veteran is waiting outside. Tell them that the hero of the Battle of New Orleans awaits their decision as to whether or not he will have food this day. You ask them that, Monsieur Ross. May take some time to convince them. Monsieur Ross, all soldiers have patience and I have great faith in you. And if he turns out to really be Lafitte, we're gonna feel pretty foolish, ain't we? Turn him away and all him being a, an American war hero. Oh, a war hero, my foot. He's a swindler, he's a phony. Look, can't you want... What do you got there? It's uh, another little gem he gave me. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Look at that. It's another phony gem. Now look, what do I have to do to get it through that thick skull of yours? What does that prove? It just proves Mr. Lafitte's got a bunch of phony jewelry. Oh, well, forget it. You try and talk to him, Pa. <clears throat> well, uh, it's uh, highly improbable that he's the Mr. Lafitte, the war hero. Huh? But it's not entirely impossible. Huh? So uh, I suggest we compromise. Let's have him here in our home as our guest for the next couple of days. But let's keep a very careful eye on all the silverware. Oh. You know, if Adam was here right now, he would agree with me. Well, he ain't here. He's in San Francisco and Mr. Lafitte's staying, and that's all there is to it. Hey, Pa, you mind if I uh, take a look at those books of yours? You want to look at books? Yeah, I thought I might uh, read up on the War of 1812. <laughs> Hey, la tête, hey, la tête, all the wet, all the wet. Oh, all the wet, chanty, all the wet. All the wet, je te plumerai, je te plumerai le bec, je te plumerai le bec. Hey, le bec, hey, le bec, hey, la tête, hey, la tête, all the wet, all the wet. Oh, all the wet, chanty, all the wet. Alouette, je te plumerai, je te plumerai le dos, je te plumerai le dos, et le dos, et le dos, et le bec, et le bec, et la tête, et la tête, alouette, oh, alouette, chante, alouette, alouette, je te plumerai. Beautiful young lady will have even more fun. The evening is just beginning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. Feet, you and me are gonna have to be going home now. Man, your age has gotta have a sleep. Nonsense! Oh, 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 oh. Then a man my age has gotta have a sleep. His age, you know. No, right. we'll have one more round, but then we gotta go home for sure, you hear? Oh. <laughs> one more round, Sam, on the tab. Okay, we'll be. Better get cash, Sam. Can't take his old codger. Especially when he's drunk. Never really remembers what he does or says. Then has to go around apologizing when he's sober. Huh? Whitaker. What's on your mind, boy? Sir, you... You know my pole well enough, or you certainly ought to. 
to know that he ain't gonna try to cheat you. He took my money, and he swears he didn't. Now, some folks call that cheating. Well, it's some sort of misunderstanding. I'm certain if you two could get together, talk. There's nothing I'd like better than to talk to Ben Carteright. I've been looking forward for a long time to telling him exactly what I think of him. Well, why weren't you in shape to do just that in Lawyer Betts' office the other day? Lawyer Betts? What are you talking about? This is the first I've been in town in a long time. Mr. Whitaker, I seen you with my own two eyes come out of this saloon Friday. Lawyer Betts said you showed up at his office and drunk you couldn't talk. And he sent you home. Sometimes I don't remember when I get drinking pretty heavy. That's my business, not yours. Yeah. Mr. Whitaker, look, why don't you let me alone? Isn't it enough that you've lied to me and cheated me? Monsieur, do not talk like that to a friend of Jean Lafitte, or you will find you have no throat to talk through. Mr. Lafitte, please. I can take care of this, I assure you. Very well, if you insist, but you, remember. Sorry about that. He, he's just a harmless old man. What I was about to ask you was, had you been drinking hard that day you claimed that you paid my paw for that herd? My foreman was there. He saw me hand your father that money. Then oh. Tully told you about it the next day, huh? Mr. Whitaker, I've never known you to lie. And certainly not my Paul. But I'm sorry, I, I can't say the same thing for Tully. My Paul would be more than happy to ride out to your place at your convenience. Anytime tomorrow. Talk this thing over with you and try to get it settled. Beautiful breakfast. Beautiful breakfast. But you know, this coffee you should have a little chicory in it in the style of New Orleans. I will tell Hop Singh the secret. You know, for a man who had no sleep, you're mighty chipper this morning, Mr. Lafitte. Yeah, how do you do it? Clean living, my boy. Clean living. No. Oh. It's all very pleasant. I gotta go to see him, Miss Whitaker. Don't lose your temper, Father. All right, come on in. Come on. I'm sorry, I'm just leaving, but uh, you're going to have some coffee with the boys. Well, thanks. Uh, where are you heading, Ben? I'm going to see Amos Whitaker. You save yourself a trip. Hmm? Amos is dead. What? What happened to him, Roy? Somebody slit his throat. With this. My cutlass, of course. During all the gaiety at the saloon last night, it was either lost or stolen. And that must have been after you threatened Whitaker. Oui. I first noticed it was missing after Monsieur Haas left for home around uh, midnight, I should say. And you two weren't together all evening? No, sir. Mr. Lafitte stayed at the saloon after I left. Mr. Lafitte. We figured that Amos Whitaker was murdered about 3 o'clock this morning. Now, where were you at that time? I cannot compromise a lady. Well, if you cannot come up with something better than that, you're in real trouble. Sheriff, before you start making any charges, maybe you ought to check and find out where Amos Whitaker's foreman was at 3 o'clock this morning. I know where Tully was. He was getting his throat slit, too. On my honor, as a soldier who was decorated by the American government, I had nothing to do with these killings. Just the same, you're going to have to come along with me. All right. We'll see that you have a, a defense lawyer. You are most kind. Um, you, you look at that. Broiled lizard tongue. A very interesting dish. 
Now, what are you talking about? That's the most tender chicken there is to be had anywhere. Then what is your secret recipe that makes it taste like broiled lizard tongs? Hiya, Johnny boy. Oh, just in time. Mon <laughs> Oh. Mr. Lafitte, Molly here says that she was the one you was out with the other night, and right during the time the murder took place. So I reckon that clears everything up, huh, Roy? <laughs> That's right. Johnny Boy and I went for a buggy ride after we left the saloon. Mm. Oh, it was very romantic. We must have stayed out till almost 2 o'clock in the morning. No, it was much later than that, ma chérie. You remember the beautiful sunrise as we returned? Sunrise? What sunrise? This sunrise. The one you and I watched this morning together. Just uh, tell the truth, Miss Molly, exactly as you remember it. Well, the truth is, it, it was just before 2 o'clock when I got back to my room at the hotel. Well, that would have given Johnny Boy here plenty of time to ride out Damus Whitaker's ranch for 3 o'clock in the morning, wouldn't it? I uh, think that'll be all, Miss Travers. I'm sorry, Johnny Boy. It's been fun up to now. Molly. Johnny boy. Molly. Right there. She is lying. It is her word against mine. Uh, I mean no offense, Mr. Lafitte. But as your lawyer, it is my duty to point out that yours is the word of a pirate with an extremely spotty record. Lawyer Betts, you think that Mr. Lafitte's past will have any influence on the jury? Jurors are only human. I think it might make a very big difference. In that case, gentlemen, I have a small confession to make. I am not Jean Lafitte. You ain't Jean Lafitte? And you spent all this time convincing folks you were? Let us say I am an old man who enjoys his little joke. Making fools out of folks. Is that your idea of a joke? I am sorry, messieurs. I am very sorry. I have lied to you often, but this, I swear to you, is the truth. I did not kill Monsieur Whitaker or his foreman. And I reckon you're willing to swear to that on your honor as a great American hero, huh? I do not blame you for no longer believing in me. Again, Mr. Lafitte, or whatever his name is, I'll be right back. I'm sorry, Hoss. You know, I, I reckon I'm pretty stupid, but for some reason or other, boy, I can't keep from believing him when he tells me he didn't kill him two men. Now, why, why should you think that makes you stupid? He, uh, he happens to be a man who lives by his wits. You happen to be a fellow who lives by your heart, and you know, I think I like your way better. Well, it don't make no difference, I reckon, because I've had it with him. All his tall tales and his lies and his fake jewelry. I mean, really, Paul, I've had it with him. Oh, uh, how kind of you to bring me fresh linen. It's all right, Mr. Lafitte. Uh, Monsieur Oz, I hate to ask, but when a man's life is at stake, he will risk anything, any humiliation. Mm-hmm. Just one last small favor. Like? The very beautiful Mademoiselle Molly will be in her room at the hotel right now. I would appreciate it very much if you would talk to her and ascertain why she stole my cutlass. Mr. Lafitte, why are you so all fired sure that it was Molly that stole your cutlass? Because I know women. Now off with you to Mademoiselle Molly before she leaves for the dance hall. Dad, burn it, I reckon I'm some kind of a dang fool or something. Monsieur Oz, 
Just please believe me innocent of those murders, whatever else you may believe of me. I swiped Johnny Boy's cutlass while he and I were dancing together, huh? And then after that, I suppose I slipped it to a confederate and took Johnny Boy buggy riding until dawn. Is that it? Oh, no, Miss Molly, it ain't what I think. It's... <laughs> you know, Haas, that two-faced old rascal's really got you bamboozled. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get to work. Yes. Away. What are you doing? Not until I have sliced this so beautiful little lady into not so beautiful little pieces. Oh, Hoss, Hoss, he's just local enough to do it. Again. You will die by inches. You will die slowly, oh, no. slowly. Oh, ah, no. ah, ah, feet, Mr. Lafitte! <laughs> no. Uh, I must follow her, please. I must find out where she goes. You're going right back to jail where you belong. That's where you're going. If Lafitte gives you his word of honor that he will return to the jail cell at once, will you follow her? Yeah, but you ain't Lafitte, remember? Yeah. You're a fake. Even an imposter has honor. There, you see? She runs down the street. Does she run to the sheriff's office? No, she runs in the opposite direction to her unknown accomplice. You must follow her. You must. Or forfeit me to the hangman. All right, but if you're making a fool out of me again... Back to the jail cell, I swear to you. Not the s'il vous plaît. Je vous en prie. Vite, vite. All right, I'll follow her, but you back to the jail, you hear? Come on. <laughs> jail cell. Did not Lafitte keep his word as always? Did I not return to my cell? You must not have stayed very long. What are you doing with Roy's hat and coat on in here? It is a disguise. Now I'm accomplice to a jailbreak. Take heart, Monsieur Hoss. All will be straightened out in due course. Now, what about Mademoiselle Molly? That's something else. She didn't go to no confederate. She went to her lawyer. That's where she went. So? What lawyer? Same one you got. Walter Betts. Oh! She didn't get seen, though. There's a note on his door said he wouldn't be back till after supper. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Lafitte is counting on his good friend for one last small favor. What more do you want from me, anyhow? My whole defense depends upon it. Now follow me. About Mr. Betts' back door. Looks like any other door to me. Would you mind keeping your eye on this street while I make my examination, please? Well, make it snappy because Mr. Betts is going to be back here in a minute. How long are you going to have to study that door, Mr. Lafitte? Mr. 
Sí. How come you didn't tell me you was going to break in here? Would you have allowed it? I certainly wouldn't. You see? Oh, what are you figuring on finding in here anyhow? Evidence that loyal Betsy's Mademoiselle Molly's accomplice. If that ain't the silliest dang thing I ever heard of. Oh, is it? Lawyer Betsy's honest clean through. Ah, monsieur, did I not fool you into thinking that I was Jean Lafitte? You sure did. Then is it not possible that Lawyer Betts could have fooled you into thinking that he is honest, clean through? Yeah, what makes you suspect him? It could be nobody else. He made a brief appearance in the saloon that night after you left, and Mademoiselle Molly could very easily have slipped in my cutlass. There was no other explanation. Oh, yes, he is. There's one. Oh, yeah, indeed. What, 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 what? That uh, you could still be the murderer after all. Could I look you in the eye if that were true? Yep, and pick my pocket while you've done it. Well, since you understand me so well, you must know that I could not have murdered those two men, no? Huh? Thank you, Monsieur Hoss. Now, please, one small favor. Will you continue looking for evidence? Hey, wait a minute. Mr. Lafitte, how am I going to find what I don't even know what I'm looking for? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait just a dang minute. What do you think you're doing anyhow? The safe, it was behind the picture. You can't do that, that's burglary. Mm -hmm. Everything will be all right. You wait and see, Monsieur Us. Almost exactly the same amount Mr. Whitaker claimed to have given your father. Hey, wait till the sheriff sees that. Ooh. It would be a mistake to give it to the sheriff. A man as shrewd as Mr. Betts would no doubt have some explanation as to how he came by such a huge sum. What are we going to do then? Several things. One, we can return the money to the safe and lock it up. Two, we can put the picture back in place on the wall so that Mr. Betts will not know that his secret has been discovered. And uh, three, three, three. Ah. <clears throat> can you see me here? Nope. Then three, I will hide here. And for you, I suggest... Uh, The closet. We're gonna hide out till the lawyer gets back, right? Exactly. Then we find out what Mademoiselle Molly has to say to him. Yeah, but what if he catches us? Always you look on the gloomy side. Why cannot you be more cheerful? You will not have to remain there more than one hour at the most. doing here? Did you know that Lafitte bound and gagged Sheriff Coffey in his own jail and then escaped? Good. Good? The old buzz is threatening to kill me. Well, no, I'll ask the sheriff to appoint a deputy to guard you. You'll be safe. And Lafitte's escaping will be considered an admission of guilt. You know, you're smart, Walter. So smart you sometimes worry me. You get people trusting you and then... And then? And then, like Tully. What about Tully? Tully played square with us all the way through. You paid him off with a slit throat. 
Isn't a two-way split better than a three? And what happens to me if you decide a one-way split is better than two? I rode all the way to Morgan City today to make the arrangements to buy a dance hall with the money from this deal. You're gonna run it with me as a silent partner. Now, does that sound like a double cross? every word we said. Unbuckle the gun belt. Drop it. Where's Lafitte? Oh. You never were a very good liar, Hoss. He's around here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Well, Hoss isn't tricky enough to pull something like this on his own. Where is he? I said I didn't know. No place here he could hide except... Come on out, Mr. Lafitte. Deceitful, conniving old... How long were you in that closet? About an hour. Your Honor, may I address the court? I came home from a business trip, found a prowler in my office. It was dark and I shot him before I realized it was Hoss Cartwright. And to this day, I have no idea what he was doing there. Well, Your Honor? Killing Amos Whitaker was bad enough. Tully was even worse, but... But Haas... I suppose you'd rather the law hung both of us. Somewhat out of breath is all. When one reaches the age of 70, it is time to give up acrobatics. And here, never, never put such temptation in my path again. Oh. Look here, uh, Mr. Lafitte, you could have got away with that. How come you didn't? Because. You believed in me. You were my friend. And a feat never abandons a friend. Uh, at least not very often. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where you find these stories. Uh, <laughs> now look, before you leave, you must do us one small little favor. Well, certainly. Uh, tell us who you are. Who? I, I mean, who you are really. Who I am, really? I'm Jean Lafitte, of course. But 
Mr. Lafitte, when you were in the jail cell, you said that... Because at that time it was inconvenient for me to be Jean Lafitte, but now with the charges against me being dismissed, I am free to resume my true identity. I see. Well, uh, where are you going to go now, Mr. Lafitte? Where will I go now? Where the music is gay, where the wine is good, and where the women are beautiful. Eh bien. No. Oh. Monsieur Oz, one small last favor, if you please. I thank you very much. Mes amis, au revoir. You know, I don't think he's ever gonna change. No, I guess not. Hey, look what the old phony gave me. Another diamond. Hey, no, another <laughs> one? <laughs> what did you give him in return this time? <laughs> the horse he's riding? No. Oh. The second best saddle I own. And every penny I had to my name. But boy, it's worth it. The stories the old guy told. I know. He was telling me one just the other day, a new one. Yeah. See, he was boarding this ship all along, yeah. single-handedly. Yeah. So he had his yeah. sword hey, and he jumped down. Yeah. This is a real diamond. Yeah, no. So he jumped. Don't suppose that really is 